This video will cover the Year 8 Statistics Test Preview. I'll put some time tags in the description below so you can skip to question numbers if you're following along with the test preview. Otherwise, there'll be a description of the sorts of question we're answering for everyone else. Question 1A is asking us to find the mean or the average. And in order to do that, what we need to do is add these numbers up together and then divide them by how many scores we've got. So we say... 9 plus 10 plus 6 plus 4 plus 9 plus 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 6 all divided by the number of scores which is 9 and that will equal 55 divided by 9 which is 6.1 Question 1B is also asking us to find the mean, so we're going to need to add these scores together and then divide them by 8 because there's 8 scores all together. So it will be 5.7 plus 3.1 plus 7.7 plus 2.5 plus 9.6 plus 3.1 plus 2.7 plus 9.1 all divided by 8 because there are 8 scores all together and that will give us 43 and a half divided by 8 which is 5.44 Question 2A is finding the median of these scores. So the first thing you need to do is go through and write them in order from the smallest number through to the largest. So I did that before I started the video because it's not very interesting watching me do that. And then you need to count how many scores there are and there's 10. And this is important because it means that you are looking for the fifth and the sixth score, okay? The middle two scores, which is these ones. Because this is an even number and you can only have one median, you only need to find halfway between these two numbers. Now this one would be nice and easy at six and a half, but let's assume that you've got difficult numbers to work with. What you can do to find the median is you can add those two scores together and divide them by two. And that will give you a score of six and a half. Question 2b is asking us to find the median as well, so I've gone ahead and put the numbers in order from the smallest number through to the largest number, so they're arranged in ascending order. And if you have a look across here, this time we have got 7 scores, which is an odd number, so unlike 2a, this time there will only be one median score and it will be the fourth one. So this one's nice and easy, it will have a median of 7.2. Question 3a is asking us to identify an outlier. Now an outlier is a number that doesn't really fit. So if you have a look at this set of data, you can see straight away that 55 doesn't fit. It's the largest number by a long way. And then it asks us to describe what the effect will be on the medium. Because it's the highest score, it's going to have a minimal impact on the median or middle score. So once you've arranged them from the smallest number through to the largest, it's not going to alter the position of the middle score. If you want to hear a little bit more about that and understand it a little bit better, go back to the fourth slide and I talked about other ways of looking for the middle score other than using the mean. And this would be an example where using a median score would be much better than a mean. Question 3b is asking us to um, identify an outlier again, so a data, a piece of data that doesn't really fit and explain if it has any effect on the median. And much like the last question, if you scan through here, 1 is the obvious one that stands out. Not as badly as what 55 did, but it definitely doesn't fit this data set. And again, this one's going to be the lowest score, so it's going to have a minimal impact on the median or middle score once we arrange these from smallest through to largest. Question 4 is giving us another set of scores and it's asking us to identify the outlier and this time it wants us to tell them if it's likely to have an impact on the mean or the average. So when you look at this set of data 35 stands out straight away as being the outlier. 
and I would imagine that this is going to have a fairly significant impact on the main. So the best way to do that might be to work out what the average would be without this and then including this. So if we disclude it from the set of data and we say 6 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 9 plus 7 plus 9 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 then what we would end up with is an average of 8.43 and if we include it in the data so 6 plus 8 plus 35 plus 9 plus 11 plus 9 plus 7 plus 9 divide that all by 8 we would end up with an average of 11.75 so we can see that it does raise the average so because the outlier is 24 bigger or larger than any of the other numbers um, and that's quite significant in this number set it has an overall effect of raising the mean by 3.32 so it definitely affects the mean and in this case it may have been better to use the median instead of the mean question 4b has got us looking for the outlier again and again it wants to know if there's an effect on the mean so in the last example we saw that there was one if you scan through this set of numbers 91 is the outlier so this time the outlier is the low number so what we'll do is we'll do the same thing again we'll go and work out what the average is with and without this and see what effect it's got so if we do it without first and there are one two three four five six seven scores in this instance give us a total of 118.57 and then if we include it in the data set so I'm going to divide by 8 scores that will lower the average to 115.13 so yes it does have an impact so the outlier is 91 it's the minimum by 25 and it affects the mean by lowering it by 3.44 question 5 is asking us to find an unknown number Okay, and we're going to use the skills that we've got in statistics to work out um, what the number could possibly be. Okay, now the clue is that the median score is five, so the middle number is going to be five, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scores altogether. So five is going to go in the middle. Okay, and there are going to be three numbers either side of it. Okay, so we can fill in those spaces. So let's have a look. What's higher than 5? We've got 6, 7 and 9. And then we need 3 numbers here lower than it. And so we've got a 1 and a 4. And then X can be dropped in here. So really, X could be 5 or any number lower than 5 it could fit anywhere in this gap here so that means that x our unknown will be less than or equal to the number 5 or you can just pick any arbitrary number that is smaller and put that in instead question 6 we are looking for another unknown number and so we this time are trying to make a median of 6.5 so the first thing I might do is just write these out in ascending order so from smallest through to largest so I've got 1 2 4 6 7 8 8 and 9 okay 
So if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scores all together, I'll be looking for the fourth and fifth score to be my median. And this at the moment is my fourth. So my little x, my unknown, is going to have to go in either side of this question. And of course the median is six and a half, so it's going to squeeze in here and it's going to be six. Because halfway between six and seven is six and a half. So my unknown is six and a half. Okay, question eight is a tricky one. What we need to do is we need to find out two unknown values. This time we've got the mean again, and we've also got the range here. Okay, now straight away I can see that the biggest number that we have here that we know is 9 and the smallest one is, is 5 and 9 minus 5 is only 4 so I imagine that one of these numbers is going to be bigger than 9 at least okay so let's work it similarly to what we did in question 7 um, and what we'll do is we'll just keep A and B together as, as one number just for the moment okay so we would normally work out the mean by saying 6 plus 8 plus 5 plus 9 plus 7 plus 9 plus 7 plus A plus B. Now I'm going to put those in brackets just to keep them together as if they were one number, okay, just for a little while. All over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, so the number of scores we've got is 9, we'll just make a little note of that, and that will be an average of 8. And now we'll collect up our like terms. So I will have 51 plus A and B divided by 9 equaling 8. And now if I do the balance method, it says divide by 9. So I'm going to multiply anything I do to one side. I must do to the other. So I've got 51 plus our unknown numbers being equivalent to 72. And then it's a positive 51, so I'm going to take it away. Anything I do on that side, I'm going to have to do it over here on this side. So I know that scores A and B will add together to give me 21. So whatever this number is plus this number will give us 21. So let's just park that for a minute. Okay? What we might do now is we might see if we can find out what one of the numbers is that's the big one okay because we know that whatever it is so let's say that a is our bigger number a minus 5 has to give us 8 which is the range okay so I'm saying the highest number the one I don't know take away the lowest number which I do know is going to be 8 and then we'll just quickly balance method that so that says take 5 so I'm going to add 5 anything I do to that side I must do to that so a is 13. So we know what our first of the two scores is. And then we can use the little rule that we've made here to solve what B is. Okay, so we're going to use substitution to find this. So we, instead of writing A, I'm going to say 13 plus B is 21. And then I can take that 13 away. Anything I do to that side, I have to do to that side. So B is 8. So my two scores are 8 and 13. These are the answers to question 9. Rather than go through this entire table, instead what I've done is in the follow-up slides I've put down a description with some examples of each of these types of data for you to read so that it's a little clearer.